Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone, and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the arterial supply to the upper limb. I'll break this tutorial into two parts. In this part we'll take a look at the supply to the arm and the forearm, and in the next part we'll take a look at the blood supply to the hand and the wrist. We'll start off by looking at the origin of the arterial supply to the limb by looking at the vessels in the chest. So what we're looking at here is the arch of the aorta with its three branches. You've got the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian artery. As the subclavian arteries on either side cross the lateral edge of the first rib to enter the axilla, it becomes known as the axillary artery, which you can see here highlighted in green. We're now looking at an isolated view of the axillary artery and its branches. You can see the subclavian artery crossing the lateral border of the first rib to become the axillary artery. Also on the model here, you'll notice that I've left a muscle on. This is the pectoralis minor muscle, which you can see originating on the coracoid process of the scapula. The importance of the pectoralis minor muscle is that it runs in front of the axillary artery and divides it into three parts. So the first part of the axillary artery lies proximal to the pectoralis minor, the second part lies underneath it, and the third part lies distal to it. I've removed the pectoralis minor muscle now and we'll take a look at the six branches of the axillary artery. So quite conveniently, the first part of the axillary artery has one branch, the second part has two branches, and the third part gives rise to three branches. The first branch, which you can see highlighted in green, arising from the first part of the axillary artery, is called the superior thoracic artery. The two branches from the second part of the axillary artery you can see highlighted in yellow. This one here is the acromiothoracic trunk, which is also known as the thoracoacromial artery, and this one here is the lateral thoracic artery. So the third part gives off three arteries. You've got the circumflex arteries, anterior and posterior, and you've got the subscapular artery. You can see the anterior circumflex humeral artery here in light blue, running in front of the surgical neck of the humerus, and anastomosing with this artery, the posterior circumflex artery. And just rotating fully around to the back, you can see the subscapular artery coming off. The subscapular artery is the largest branch of the axillary artery, and you can see two of its branches here, the scapular circumflex artery and the thoracodorsal artery. The axillary artery then becomes the brachial artery at the level of the lower border of the teres major muscle, which marks the lower boundary of the axilla. The brachial artery runs down the arm to end at the level of the neck of the radius, where it then divides into the radial and ulnar arteries. The brachial artery runs a superficial course just below the deep fascia, and it gives off four branches. You've got the profunda brachii artery, which is highlighted in yellow. This is the deep artery of the arm. You've got the nutrient artery to the humerus, and you can see this in green. And then you've got the superior and inferior ulnar collateral arteries. So you can see the superior ulnar collateral artery in light blue coming off superiorly from the brachial artery, and then the inferior ulnar collateral artery you can see here in purple coming off inferiorly. So let's take a look at the profunda brachii artery, which we saw in yellow. This artery is the largest branch, and it passes posteriorly to supply the posterior compartment of the arm. As you can see here, the profunda brachii artery terminates by dividing into two branches. In purple, you can see the radial collateral artery, and in blue, we've got the middle collateral artery. So we've now looked at four collateral arteries. We've got the ulnar collateral arteries, which arise directly from the brachial artery, and you've got a superior and inferior ulnar collateral artery. And then we've taken a look at the middle collateral artery and the radial collateral artery, which arise from the profunda brachii artery. So I've just zoomed in a little bit, and if I rotate the model around so we have a posterior view of the elbow, you can see how these collateral arteries anastomose around the elbow joint to form this rich anastomotic network. Looking at the middle collateral artery in blue, you can see how it descends to anastomose with this vessel here. This is a branch of the posterior interosseous artery known as the interosseous recurrent artery. Rotating the model anteriorly, you can see how the radial collateral artery winds around anteriorly to anastomose with a recurrent branch of the radial artery. This is known as the radial recurrent artery. A recurrent artery is simply an artery that reflects back in the opposite direction of its parent artery after its origin. As we saw before, the brachial artery terminates by dividing into the radial and ulnar arteries. The radial artery begins at the neck of the radius and passes laterally along the forearm. In this part of the tutorial, we'll just look at the proximal branches of the radial and ulnar arteries. We'll look at the distal branches in the next part of this tutorial in which we'll cover the arterial supply to the hand and the wrist. So proximally, the radial artery only has one branch, the radial recurrent artery, which we've just looked at, anastomosing with the radial collateral artery. Now the ulnar artery, which we're looking at here, passes along the medial aspect of the forearm. Proximally, it gives off the ulnar recurrent arteries. So remember, a recurrent artery is simply an artery which reflects back in the opposite direction of its parent artery. There are two ulnar recurrent arteries, anterior and posterior. In this model, they're seen originating from a common trunk, but often they will arise directly from the proximal ulnar artery. So we saw the superior and inferior ulnar collateral arteries arising directly from the brachial artery in the first part of this tutorial, and we can see how they anastomose with the ulnar recurrent arteries. Now a little bit more distally, there's another branch given off the proximal ulnar artery. This is the common interosseous artery, which divides into an anterior branch and a posterior branch. I've zoomed in a little bit closer, and you can see here the anterior interosseous artery, which descends down the forearm on the anterior aspect of the interosseous membrane. If I rotate the model posteriorly, we can see the posterior interosseous artery, and it gives off the interosseous recurrent artery, which anastomoses with the middle collateral artery, which we saw before was a branch of the profunda brachii artery. So we've taken a good look now at this rich anastomotic network that's formed around the elbow joint, and we've looked at the proximal branches of the radial and ulnar arteries that contribute to this, as well as the branches of the brachial artery. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at the distal branches of the radial and ulnar arteries, and the blood supply to the hand and the wrist.